This is Anne Woodbury from the Nova Scotia Agricultural College Diploma of Enterprise Management speaking on pasteurization of eggs in today's agriculture. Chocolate mousse is one of my favorite desserts, but sometimes I wonder if the ingredients are in it are safe, and I wonder if what I'm eating is safe because of the raw eggs in the ingredients. Recent food scares have been a cause of concern for egg producers and consumers alike. This issue has resulted in the agricultural industry looking for ways to let us have our chocolate mousse worry free. What I'd like to talk to you about today is actually defining the pasteurization process, some of the agricultural issues associated with pasteurized eggs, some of the health concerns involved around it like salmonella from raw eggs, why we pasteurize in the first place, and a couple of the pasteurization methods used and their advantages and disadvantages. So the actual process of pasteurization is applying a precise amount of controlled heat for a specific period of time in order to kill off any potentially harmful bacteria. In the case of the egg, it is 60 degrees Celsius for one hour to destroy the bacteria salmonella. The problem with doing this is that the coagulating temperature of the egg whites is higher, or lower rather, than that of the egg yolk. So it'll cook before the egg yolk does. And the egg yolk is what is essentially what needs to be pasteurized. So it's really hard to do this without actually cooking the egg itself. Some of the agricultural issues associated with this topic is that the market niche for pasteurized eggs is growing. More establishments are demanding the use of pasteurized eggs in the products that they serve like fast food restaurants in their sandwich, in their breakfast sandwiches, and hospitals and nursing homes for the patients and their meals. The poultry industry is looking for ways into pasteurization process more than ever to meet the demands of the expanding market. So I ask, what is the major reason for pasteurizing eggs in the first place? One of the major reasons is the health concerns. A concern that many egg producers have is the risk of salmonella in their eggs. Salmonella can be transferred from humans by eating raw or undercooked eggs. A risk analysis study done shown that one in every 30,000 eggs is contaminated with salmonella. Although the risk isn't as high as it used to be, new studies look into further reduce the possibilities of the risk as much as possible. The infection of salmonella can cause in humans a range of symptoms, including nausea, vomiting, or cramps, and in extreme, well, in, may even result in death. So why do we pasteurize in the first place? In nature, eggs have a natural protective barrier, which is the eggshell. And if it gets cracked, broken, damaged, or the egg itself is laid by an unfit hen, it then becomes susceptible to the salmonella disease. This is why some people prefer to purchase the pasteurized eggs, because they have a sense of security in knowing that the pasteurized process has taken in its effect and has killed off any of the potentially harmful bacteria. Also, these eggs make great use for recipes with non-cooking that call for eggs, like chocolate mousse or eggnog. A couple of the pasteurization methods used for the pasteurizing egg process is the, heater is the heated water method. But keep in mind, egg pasteurization is relatively new. So methods are constantly being done and looked at and run through comparisons to see which is the most effective. The heated water method is essentially taking a large fat of eggs and submersing them in heated water for about an hour and then coating them with a protective wax coating. It's more commonly practiced method in egg pasteurization today and is for use in large commercial industries. People who oftentimes try it at home usually end up cooking the eggs because it's quite difficult to measure the precise heat and amount of time it needs to be in there. The second method used is a newer method of pasteurization and it is the microwave thermal processors. Studies done by McGill University show that the microwave method is more effective in terms of keeping the nutrient value of the egg, because the proteins are the protein levels in the egg are higher once they've been microwaved as compared to the heated water bath method. Again, the machinery is not for use at home, it's for commercial use on the manufacturing line. 
So in conclusion, I would just like to mention a few of the points I've talked about today. How will the egg producers take to pasteurizing? Will it become the norm for all eggs to be pasteurized in the end? And how will it affect the production costs? Will the risk of salmonella always be associated with raw eggs, creating a sense of insecurity for those who purchase unpasteurized eggs, maybe making them want to purchase the pasteurized eggs? And which, which methods of pasteurization are most effective? With the microwave method, there is less nutrient value, or there is less nutrient value deterioration and it's just better for the egg quality and nutrition. But it may not be adopted by those preferring the older methods that have been tried before and proven to be good, like the heat and water bath method. So in conclusion, the next time you indulge in chocolate mousse dessert or celebrate the season with a cup of eggnog, keep in mind the eggs used in the production and if they are safe or raw. Perhaps a time will come when there will be no worry at all when it comes time to crack a few eggs.